When you do it wrong, this is a sign of intense love. So today, we want to take this opportunity to speak about the glory of Bhakti. Bhakti Devi Ki! Our amplification is better. By, you can hear, anyone? By the mercy of our previous Acharyas, we have come into this life of bhakti yoga, devotion to Sri Krishna. Don't take it lightly. Don't think that any activity of bhakti is a mundane, material, or insignificant. But rather, bhakti yoga is so powerful, it is so effective, that even the slight touch of one activity of bhakti can make your life completely perfect. So in the Shastra, Srila Vedavyas and other rishis have given so many examples to help us understand. Once upon a time, there were two drunk men. They went into the forest and they were drinking. They became intoxicated and they became so crazy they thought, oh, we are cuckoo birds. <laughs> and they were dancing and cuckoo, cuckoo. <laughs> in their drunkenness. Huh? So in the forest, there was an old uh, ruin of a temple that was no longer in use anymore. But they found one stick, a broken stick. And they tied a piece of cloth to the stick, like a flag. And they were dancing together in the ruin of the temple. And in the end of their life, though they could not understand it, but in the last moment of their life, when death came, they went to Vaikuntha. <laughs> Why? Because they got, there's a, one anger of devotional service is to decorate the temple with a flag. So because even though they were drunk and foolish, even unknowingly, by the, not actually bhakti, but the abhas. It was only the semblance of bhakti. Understand? They didn't understand anything. But by the abhas, the semblance of bhakti, it was not their intention, oh, we should put a flag on the temple, decorate the temple with a flag. But still, the power was there in the abhas of bhakti, that they were liberated from this world, and they went to Vaikuntha. So bhakti is extremely powerful. In Srimad Bhagavatam, Sri Shona Karishi, he said, Apanaha samsritim goram yan nama viva sogranam tata sadhyao vimuchita yad vibeti swayam bayam. If a living being is entangled in the complicated mesh of karma, birth and death in this world, and even vivash, that means helplessly, they utter the name of Krishna, then they'll be liberated from this world. Hmm? Vivash. V means without. And Vash means will. Your will or your intention. So even if a person, even referring to something else, calls the name of Krishna, then they'll be liberated from this world. Sankirtyam parihasyam vas dobam helanam eva va vaikunta nam grahanam asheshagam aram viduhu the messengers of Lord Vishnu, they said if a person will take the name of Krishna even to refer to something else. So it's the Nam Abbas. 
or for musical entertainment. Or oh, Parias, just for a joke, even. Oh, look at those Hare Krishnas. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or neglectfully, even. But that person, all their sins, Ashesh Hagam, that means unlimited sins. All the sins of the past, the present, and even that person in the future, if he commits more sins, those reactions are already taken away before he even commits the sins. By one name, one Nam Abhas. Lord Ramachandra has said, Sakrid Eva Prapanno Yas Tavasmiti Chayachate Yachate Abayam Sarvada Tasmai Dadam Yaitan Bratam Mama. If some person only once in their life will say, oh, I, oh my Lord, I surrender to you. I am yours. Everyone say, Oh Krishna! Oh, Krishna. Oh, Krishna. I, am yours. I am yours! Then if a person says this once in their life, then Krishna says, I will deliver that person from all fear. This is my vow. This is my brata. And Krishna always keeps his vow. Satya pratam, satya param, trisatyam. If Krishna makes a vow, he'll keep that vow. Unless it's in conflict with his devotee, then he'll keep his devotee's vow. <laughs> but otherwise, he'll keep it. <laughs> so, just a slight touch of bhakti, and one becomes saved from this world. No, even bhakti abhas will liberate one to Vaikuntha. So, another example is given in scripture, that once a hunter was in the forest, and he was hunting a bird and he shot his arrow and the arrow went through the bird and the bird fell down he was still alive he hadn't died yet but before the hunter could come and catch the bird one dog came along and grabbed the bird in his mouth and was running away and the hunter was chasing after the dog so to get away from the hunter the dog was running and there was a, a temple in the forest and the dog to get away from the hunter was running around the temple. So that bird who was dying in the mouth of the dog, he got the benefit of Mandir Parakrama. <laughs> and then he died and he went to Vaikuntha, to the spiritual world. Go, pray, run, pray, pray. So this is called Bibach. Even without your will, it wasn't the bird's idea, let me do the parakrama, it was helpless. Bibash. So Bibash, without will even, if you touch Bhakti, it's so powerful, you'll be liberated from this world, you can go to Vaikuntha. Going to Radha Krishna's leader, Golok Vrindavan is something more difficult to attain. We'll discuss that later, but we're going in stages, step by step. We want to go beyond Vaikuntha. But these illustrations are there, not to teach us how to go to Vaikuntha cheaply and easily, <laughs> but rather to illustrate the intense power of bhakti that even the abhas of bhakti can uh, give you liberation from this world and you can go to the spiritual world. So, many examples are there also in Shastra. How did Prahlad Maharaj become such a great devotee? In his previous life, Prahlad had, he wasn't named Prahlad in that life, whatever his name was, he had a relationship with a prostitute. And one day, he was very attached to her, he was in a state of moha, bewilderment. All attachment in this world is only moha, bewilderment. Understand. Love is between the soul and God, not between the bodies and minds of living entities. So he was in a state of moha, in attachment for this prostitute. And one day they had a big argument. And because of this argument, he was so upset that he didn't eat or drink for the whole day and the whole night. And he stayed awake the whole night. But he just happened to be Mishinga Tatudasi. <laughs> so by chance, he observed complete fasting and all night, staying awake all night as a, like a rat on the Shiga Tatursi and in his next life he became Prahlad Maharaj. <laughs> so these are the examples of the Abbas, 
not actually bhakti, only touching a semblance of bhakti, vivash, even without the person's will, and look at the effect. Very, very effective. Our Srila Jiva Goswami Pad has given more. You may be thinking, oh, these are very extreme examples. Uh, Don't think like this. <laughs> these are the conservative examples. Now I'll tell you the extreme ones. <laughs> <laughs> but don't have any doubt. If you'll have a doubt in bhakti, then this will become tava tada tava do harinam nikalpanam to consider the glories of the holy name to be exaggeration and imagination. So it becomes offense. And then the power of bhakti you cannot experience it. These persons have not committed offense, so they experience it. So sanshayatma vinashati. Krishna said in Gita, those who have doubts, oh, their whole life is ruined. So don't have any doubt. So, more extreme example, even an offense, what would be an offense or a sinful activity, but is connected with the Abbas of Bhakti, will also give perfection. So once there was a, one Rakshasa, so Rakshasa, they are demonic persons. What is the meaning of Rakshasa? Vayam Rakshamaha Iti Rakshasa We will protect ourselves. Vayam Rakshamaha, we will protect ourselves. So if a person thinks, in my life I am strong, I am powerful, I can protect myself. I don't need the shelter of Gurudev, I don't need the association of Vaishnavas, I don't need the protection of Krishna, that person is a Rakshasa. Now, the speciality of those who are born in that caste of Rakshasa is that they are cannibals. And they're not vegetarian. <laughs> they're humanitarian, but not in the way you think. <laughs> So this Rakshasa was wandering in the forest and he saw one Brahmin uh, was doing prayers there. And he felt hungry so he thought this Brahmin would be a good snack. Hmm? And he approached the Brahmin to eat him. So then that Brahmin, he was offering prayers to Supreme Lord and he was uttering the holy names of God. Lord Narayan. And when the sound of the holy name of Lord Narayan and other names in the prayers of that Brahmin, entered into the ears of that Rakshasa. He said, ah, what happened to me? I just had a biased thought. It never happened in my life before. Why, where did this biased thought come from? Hmm? And then he decided, I should not eat this Brahman, it will be against Dharma. It was a biased thought. And then, in the end of his life also, he went to the spiritual world. Hmm? So in the Padma Purana, it is said, Namai kam yashavachi smaradakatapatam smaranapatakatam srotrabhulam gathamba shuddha vashudavana vyavahita rahitam tarya teva satyam no chedde ha dravina janita loba pashanda madhye nikshiptam syam na pala janakam shigram eva travipra. The meaning is that if somehow or other someone will chant the name of Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Or even if a person doesn't chant, they, they just remember the name of Krishna. Maybe they see the name written somewhere and their mind reads it, only in the mind without speaking. Hare Krishna. Or if someone doesn't chant or say the name in their mind, but someone else is chanting and their chanting touches the ears, then that person will be liberated. So there's a very big um, protest coming up on the 29th of this month. Two million people will be there. So we have to go there and do Harinam Sankirtan. If it will go in the ears of anyone, they will be liberated. So try to follow in the footsteps of our great Param Pujapad Sri Bihari Brahmachari. 
He is always very, very merciful to the conditioned souls. He is going out every day with his loudspeaker, even sometimes by himself, and chanting everywhere and distributing books. So he, yes. So he is very dear to see Shigor Nitai. Yes, try to be like him. I also want to be like him. So, now, the second line of the verse from Padma Purana, where are we? Namaikam yashavati smarana patakatam sotamulam gatamba Now, shuddha va shuddhavana vyavahita rahitam tariyate va satyam That means that if a person pronounces the name clearly and purely or even if they don't pronounce it perfectly like our very dear god brothers and god sisters in china sometimes they chant Hare krishna Hare krishna <laughs> so no harm even if the name is not chanted perfectly but still it gives liberation to that person not only that but if someone will chant the syllables of the name with an obstacle in between hmm? for example if someone will say halam riktam so here, halam riktam, there is ha, and then lam, and then ri, tam. So ha and ri is there. So even though they said halam riktam, they get the benefit of hari. <laughs> there was a vyavahita. That is the, sorry, that is a vyavadan. That is an obstacle between the syllables, but still the holy name acts. If someone will say, raja mahishi, that means, raja means king, mahishi means queen. So ra, and then ja interferes, intervenes, and then ma, hishi. So they, they have chanted Rama. They'll be liberated. Go, <laughs> Rama, I hope the person in that ambulance heard the holy name. They'll also be liberated. <laughs> so, the name is so powerful, but here there are some conditions. No chet deha dravina janita lobama and pashanda madde. If a person is chanting the holy name deliberately, but they want some sense gratification for themselves, they want some name and fame, some lava puja pratishta, some respect from others, and so on, any worldly things, then the name will not act immediately, but it will act. Shigra meva pravipra means. It will not act quickly, it will act gradually. So, the important point to learn here is that bhakti is very powerful. One act of bhakti is immediately effective and will liberate you. But, if there's some knowing offense, knowingly there's some offense or some duplicity, or one is knowingly using the holy name to get material things, you will still be successful, it will just take longer. The, 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 the process will be dragged out. So there are two chant, uh, stages in chanting. Hmm? What is that? Hmm? First, you say the holy name. Hmm? One time, it destroys all your sins. And the second time you chant the holy name, it gives Krishna praise. But, Mahaprabhu hmm? has said this. Ekanama basa, toma papadosa jabe. One nama bas destroys all your karma. Arunama loyati Krishna Charna Parive and the next name you chant, the second name you chant, then you get Krishna Prem. Now you may be wondering that wait a minute, I have chanted more than two times. <laughs> so if you have chanted more than two times and Krishna Prem has not come and you have not become mad in love of God and you are not seeing Radha Krishna dancing in the Rasdila on the bank of Jamuna, then this is the this is the proof that some apparat, some history of offense in this life or previous lives is present. And then bhakti becomes a long process, which is adosradha, tata sadhu, sangata, bhajana, kriyat, tona, tata, nivritisya which is the top like this. You, one has to go through the stages from Ados Radha, faith, and then the faith becomes stronger. You have Sadhu Sangha, you do Bhajan, Bhajana Kriya. Bhajana Kriya is not Bhajan. That means the activities of service. <laughs> bhajan is in the stage of, in the higher stages from Bhavri. So, you practice devotional service, anartas go away, then firm faith comes. Very firm faith. 
and then after firm faith, Nishto Hela Upajay, Bremaratarak, then the waves of love begin to appear in the form of Ruchi taste and Asakti deep attachment. In the stage of Asakti, you'll realize your swoop will manifest, your spiritual form, and begin to serve internally to Krishna. And as you become absorbed in that service, then Bhav will come and then brain. So this, these stages are there because uh, mainly in Kali Yuga we have history of offense, so we have to go through the stages. But otherwise, Bhakti is very, very immediately effective. So, we were giving some examples of a person who was doing some offensive activity, but only the Abhas of Bhakti gave him perfection. That was the Rakshasa. The Rakshasa. Now, we'll give another example. Once upon a time, there was a man, and he was very attracted to a prostitute. So he thought, how can I impress her? So he noticed that she was going to one temple of Krishna every day. So he thought, if I get to the temple first and start cleaning the floor, <laughs> then when she comes, oh, he's a great devotee. <laughs> so then that man, he went to the temple and he was cleaning the floor of the temple and, uh, and the prostitute arrived and she was very impressed. But uh, he wasn't cleaning the floor actually to do bhakti, he was doing without his intention. And the, his purpose was uh, not too religious, it was quite irreligious. Uh, but still, uh, because of, there was no presence of offense, he also went to the spiritual world. Alas, alas, everyone is going, I'm still here. <laughs> the Giwik again and the flame came out 
and the ghee got stuck in his teeth and now it was on fire so he was jumping up and down in front of the deities ah! he's also dancing in front of the deities he's one anger of devotional service and then eh, that mouse died Stand up <laughs> so the mouse was dancing in front of the deities and he gave Dandavat Pranam. In his next life, he took birth as a queen in a royal family, from a mouse to a queen. It's a great promotion. Huh? But not an ordinary queen. This was a queen who had a vow that in her life, every day of her life, she would offer Giyuks to the Supreme Lord. And then at the end of that life, then that soul went to the spiritual world. Nitai Gaurav So we are all very, very fortunate. We are all fortunate that by the mercy of our Acharyas, we have come in contact with Bhakti. Now, one may say, I am hearing all these glories of Bhakti from the scripture, but sometimes I am not feeling so inspired. Bhakti is Anandamoy. It is full of joy. Are you always feeling full of joy? No. Hmm? Not always. <laughs> Sometimes you don't feel full of <laughs> So if bhakti is in the heart, bhakti is the essence of Sambhita and Ladini Shakti, it gives all enlightenment, spiritual knowledge, clarity, free from freedom from illusion and all joy also. Mm -hmm. So if we're not feeling joyful sometimes, from time to time, you may have that experience. Huh? Then there must be a cause. What is the cause of that? So, we have to examine ourselves, put our hands on our heart and think, oh, why am I not experiencing the Paramananda, the great joy of Bhakti? Jayati Jayati Namananda Rupam Murari the name of Krishna Murari is the Ananda Loop. Why am I not experiencing this? So Srila Jiva Goswami Party gives the answer. It must be that there's some presence of Aparad. Some offense is there. Could be to the holy names, to Guru, to Vaishnavas, to the deities, to the holy Dham, to Mahaprasada. And some offense is there. This is the only reason. So Srila Bhakti Nautakura has written a beautiful bhajan, you know. Amara jivana sada pape rata nahi ko punya desha. Parayra udvega diyachi yeko to diyachi jivara desha. So there he said that aparadi nirantara. I am making offenses continuously, oh my Lord. I submit my tale of woe at your lotus feet. Please be merciful to me. I am very sinful. I am the very lusty, angry, thirsty. <coughs> if I see others are successful, I feel sad. And when I see others failing, then I celebrate. Jai, Jai, this devotee is having a failure. Uh -huh. Because of envy in the heart. Mm -hmm. So, one says, oh, that's a bit extreme. But really, if we look inside our hearts, you'll see that those feelings are there. Why? Because every conditioned soul is corrupt all the way through to the core. And all we can do is be honest and say, yes, I am a conditioned soul, I am a bad jiva, and I have all these terrible qualities. Oh my Lord, you are Pati Pavan, you are merciful to the fallen. Hmm? If you think, I am not fallen, I am very qualified. Hmm? I am very pure and religious and spiritual. Yeah? Yeah? I, am, I am not Pati fallen person. Then Krishna said, you are not Patit, okay, you can go. Huh? I will not save you. Because Lord Jagannath is Patit Pavan. So we jump up and say, oh my Lord. Ainam datanuja kinkaram patitam bhaan vishame bhavam budo. 
कृपया तब पार पंकज शीत दूर सदृशम से ओ सन ऑफ नंद महाराज आई एम योर इटर्नल सर्वेंट बट आई एम फॉलन इन दिस डार्क एंड पेरलस मटेरियल एक्जिस्टेंस प्लीज पिक मी अप एंड एक्सेप्ट मी लाइक अ स्पेक ऑफ डस्ट एट योर लोटस फीट सो बीइंग फॉलन इज नॉट अ प्रॉब्लम बट बीइंग डिसऑनेस्ट इज अ प्रॉब्लम सो इफ द चिला पाकिस्तान सो ताको ही सेड Saralata e Vaishnavata. Vaishnavism is simplicity. To be simple, to be honest, that is the real sign of the Vaishnava. And Sri Krishna will be give mercy to that person. Now, let's come to the symptoms. Someone may say, I, I have not committed any offences to anyone. <laughs> never, never, and never. <laughs> but Sri Lajiva Goswami in Bhakti Sandar when he said actually there are five symptoms by which the doctor can diagnose whether or not we have committed some offenses so we have to see if those symptoms are present in us so we'll go through them one by one and look at the scriptural examples so the first one the first symptom that some offense has been committed is called called kautilya kautilya means crookedness of heart crookedness of heart that is that we may be rendering service but the service is not sincere so the example is duryodhana perhaps you know that duryodhana invited krishna to his house please come and take your uh, feast in my house i'll arrange a big feast for you in gold and silver plates but krishna didn't go there he went uninvited to the house of vidura when he came there vidura was not there but his wife was there vidurani and when she saw krishna coming she was so ecstatic so oh, i should give him something but they were very poor she could only find a banana so in her ecstasy she filled filled the banana and by accident because of her ecstasy she threw the banana away and put the peel on the plate and gave to krishna so when krishna saw that banana peel for the first time in his life he felt mm. <laughs> today i'm feeling very hungry to taste some banana peel and he began to eat it why because krishna is not attracted by the taste of what we are offering the prakritic things the things of this world krishna is baba grahi janardan baba grahi janardan our krishna accepts our bhav so because she gave it to him with so much love then krishna was hungry to taste that bhav that mood of her then vidura came and when vidura saw krishna was being fed a banana peel by his wife he was about to chastise her but krishna shh, shh, don't say because he didn't want to disturb her mood she was in ecstasy <laughs> and krishna didn't want to disturb so he kept it <laughs> afterwards duryodhan said krishna i made a big feast for you on gold and silver plates and everything became gold and spoiled why didn't you come to my house krishna said there are only two reasons for eating one if you are hungry and two if you may not be hungry but if someone loves you and they give you something you can eat it to please them so krishna said i am atmaram after kam i am so satisfied i am not hungry and you don't love me so i didn't come <laughs> now duryodhan was trying to do service to krishna but it was done with duplicity he did not really respect krishna and especially he did not respect krishna's devotees like arjun bhim saying you just the nakul sadev the pandavas he was trying to kill them even so service is not enough you can think i am doing so much service i am cooking and cleaning and serving the deities and preaching and everything but if in our hearts from the core of our heart we don't really respect our gurudev our gurudev yeah, he knows a lot of slokes but he is not really transcendental like this he is like a sage a great sage he knows shastra if there's any thought like this in the mind then this service krishna will never accept this is a duplicity hmm? if we are serving the deity but we're not thinking ah oh, vidya nahi tu me sakshat prajanta nandam you are not a deity you are directly the son of nanda maharaj standing here hmm? then this service is with duplicity if we are serving the vaishnavas 
What do you think? Oh, this one, he eats too much. This one sleeps too much. <laughs> this one talks with a funny Swiss German. <laughs> Whatever, we see some faults <laughs> like this. Then Krishna will never accept any of our service. So this duplicity is manifest in the form of disrespect. When we don't respect the deity, when we don't respect our Gurudev, when we don't respect the Vaishnavas, there's a cause for that. Hmm? Because if Bhakti is so great, then anyone who is practicing Bhakti, we should see they're also great. So why do we see faults in the devotees? Hmm? So that fault-finding mentality is coming. This is the reaction for Aparad. Some offense is there, and that is called uh, Kautilya, crookedness. This is the first symptom. Now, we we'll come to the second symptom. The second symptom is Ashraddha. Shraddha means faith. Shraddha Shabde Vishwas Kohi Sudhida Nishchoy Krishna Bhakti Koyala Sava Kama Krita Hai Shraddha faith means the unflinching conviction that simply by serving Krishna all my responsibilities, all karmas to everyone, Deva, Deva, Shidu, Tapsarinam, Pitrinam, Nakinkaro, Nayam, Rincharajam, all my responsibilities to the demigods, to the king, to the ancestors, everything. It is all, the, all those responsibilities have been discharged simply by serving Krishna. So serve Krishna only. Not any devatas, not uh, mm, Durga, Ganesh, Mahadev, don't serve. Be Ananya, one pointed to see Krishna. Mm. Don't think that if I serve Krishna, I also have to do serve some other persons. No. By Krishna is Swayam Bhagavan. All the avatars are in him. And all devatas are all only parts of his uh, Virat Rup. He's the external material energy, the universal form. So by serving Krishna, everything is done. When we have that faith, then this is called Sraddha. And Sraddha in Amnaya Sutra, Srila Bhakti no Thakur said, Sraddha Tanadyo Varjam Bhaktun Mukhi Chitta Vritti Vishesh. Hmm? Bhakti is a Chitta Vritti Vishesh. It's a special disposition of the mind. It's a special vibration, a Chitta Vritti of your mind, which is always inclined to acts of service to Krishna, Neglecting karma, jnana, and yoga, and tapasya, all the dry me other methods of purification. We neglect them, we focus fully on bhakti. So when we have that strong faith in bhakti, that is the sign of shraddha. shraddha. And if some offense is there, then we lose that shraddha, that faith. Is Krishna really God? Is the holy name really powerful? Is cleaning the floor in the temple? Just like a, is this just like a job cleaning in the somewhere else, or is it really transcendental? These doubts come. Hmm? So asradha, faithlessness, is the second symptom. The example, who is the example of this? Who's the example of asradha? Do you remember? Also Duryodhana. Why? Another pastime. Krishna was sent as a uh, messenger, as a diplomat as the envoy of the Pandavas to go and negotiate a peace deal with Duryodhana. So Krishna tried to explain to them, to Duryodhana, just give the Pandavas five villages so that they can do their dharma of protecting the people. One village each, that's all. But Duryodhana, he said, I will not give them enough land into which one can drive the head of a pin. He was so mean. Don't be mean. Try to be generous always. Give to others more, 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 more than they expect. Vaishnavas are generous. Mahu said like a tree. Tree is giving whatever person asks for. Fruit, flowers, even its own branches and tree, twigs, leaves, even a trunk. Tree gives everything without any hesitation. So Duryodhan was very, very miserly. I'll not give you enough land into which you can drive the head of a pen. So then Krishna, as a diplomat, used another diplomatic approach. What did he do? He showed his Viratrup universal form to Duryodhan. That means Duryodhan, it's probably a good idea to follow my advice because I'm God. And he showed the whole universe was existing within him to Duryodhana. And Duryodhana saw it. And he was amazed. 
But then the next moment when Krishna withdrew the form, even though for a moment he saw Krishna's God, the next moment he shook his head, oh, it was just, he's a magician. He's like a hypnotist or something. Hmm? So, when in our spiritual life we have an experience again and again, which proves the transcendental nature of Bhakti, which proves the divine position of Gurudev and our Parampara, but then afterwards we doubt, oh, maybe it was just my mind, maybe it was just a coincidence. Hmm? So this is called Asraddha, faithlessness. And the, the faith is not taking root in our heart because of the presence of some prophet. Now, there's another mm, symptom of asraddha, the faithlessness. And that is that it is said that when one practices bhakti, he gets the results of all other practices. Vedeshu, yageshu, tapasu, chaiva, daneshu, yat, kunya, phalam, pratistam, atiti, tatsavam, idam, viditva, yogi, parastanam, upeti, chadyam. In 8th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said, those who are on the path of bhakti, they are not bereft of the results of studying the Vedas, performing austerities, performing sacrifices, giving in charity, visiting holy places, performing a yoga sadhana and meditation and all these things. But rather, they automatically get the result of all of these things and in the end they come to me. But one may see that the devotee, you see, if you do jagyas, you can become wealthy, you can become a king, you can have luxury in heaven, but you may see a devotee is poor. He may be sick, he may be unknown even, no one knows him or respects him or anything. Huh? And then you have a doubt, what is the use of this devotional service? Look at this, like Kolobeja Sridhar, they didn't even know that he was a devotee. And people didn't respect him and he was in great poverty, but he was a great Vaishnava. So seeing the difficult position of a Vaishnava in this world, some asraddha, some doubt should come. But one should not think like that. Vaishnava has all power, but they never display it uh, to get uh, fame for themselves. But they may sometimes display their powers for the glory of Krishna. So the example is given of Prahlad Maharaj. When Hirani Kashipu tried to kill Prahlad Maharaj by putting him in front of a herd of stampeding elephants, then Prahlad Maharaj, he said, I don't know why, but even though the tusks of these elephants are hard as a thunderbolt, when they touch me, they broke to pieces. I don't know why. It was not by any power of my own. It must be by the power of Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. So there's an example of Prahlad Maharaj using his astonishing powers to smash the trunks of the, the sorry, the tusks of the charging elephants. So he was un unhurt. But he didn't do it for himself. It was for the glory of Sri Krishna. Uh -huh. So, another example is um, Dhruva Maharaj. Uh, all these pastimes in, in Srimad Bhagavatam, they have very profound meanings that illustrate the various nuances of Shuddha Bhakti. When Dhruva Maharaj was standing in the British Asan on one foot, Hmm? You know that asana? We have some yogis here. So he was in the British asana, standing on one foot and remembering the mantra given by his Gurudev Narad Muni. Om Namo And at that time, because his mind was completely absorbed in the Supreme Lord, all the powers of Lord Narayan came in Dhruva Maharaj. And when he pushed down with his toe, eh, because when you do that asana to keep your balance, you have to push down with your big toe. When Dhruva Maharaj pushed down with his big toe, the earth started shaking. Just as if an elephant will get into a little boat, you know in India the boats on the Jamuna, if an elephant will get into the boat, with each step the whole boat will rock. So the earth was rocking by the Dhruva Maharaj pressing down with his toe. Hmm? So, Aracharyas explain why was that? Why was he manifesting this power of bhakti? And the reason was that he was inspired to manifest that power because it will be useful in his service. Because after the, ruling the world for 35,000 years, he would go to the pole star Dhruvalok. And the whole universe is revolving around the pole star, so it has to be very steady. So he was just practicing with his toe, keeping the whole universe steady. 
Hmm? Understand? Hmm? So the, he is, these are, I've given the examples of Prahlad Maharaj and Dhruva Maharaj showing how the devotees becomes very powerful. All the powers of the Lord act through him. But, generally they don't show it, but these are two examples where those powers were demonstrated. Now we'll give an example where the powers were not demonstrated. Who is that? Parikshit Maharaj. Because the son of the Shringi, the son of Shamik Rishi gave a curse, you'll die in seven days. So how can the curse of the son of a Brahman affect a pure devotee who is transcendental, who is full of love for Krishna, who even he can control Krishna? How can the curse of a young Brahmin boy control him when he can control Krishna? It's impossible. But Prikshit Maharaj, he get, took off his crown, he took off his armor, he left his kingdom and he went out to the bank of the Ganges and sat down there. And he said, Oh Brahmanas and Mother Ganges, you are my witness. Now I am surrendering myself completely to see Krishna. Let that snake bird come and bite me. I don't care as long as you all go on singing Kirtan and chanting the holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Go on doing Kirtan. Let the bird, but that snake bird, Takshat, bite me. You see? So, just see the mood of Prakshit Maharaj. Parikshit Maharaj was so powerful, he did not have to die in seven days actually, but he used that curse as an excuse. He thought, I'm so busy here managing the whole world as the emperor of the world, it's time for me to do bhajan. So on the excuse of the curse, he left all his kingly responsibilities and he accepted it. There was no need to do that, but he accepted it. He was not manifesting his powers, but he was manifesting his bhakti to Krishna. So the greatest power is not all these things like making the universe rock with your big toe. That is not real power. Real power is devotion to Krishna. When our heart is always melting, Shuddha Sattva Vishay Shatma Prema Suryangsu Samyabhak Ruchi Bishchat Masranya Krida So Bhava Ujjate when the heart is melting with taste, Oh Krishna, when will I be with you? Oh Krishna, when will I serve you in the most anukul, favorable way? Oh Krishna, when will I have a surid above? That is to be heart to heart with you. Intimate, close friendship with you. Surid above. So when the heart is always melting with these three types of taste, this is the greatest treasure, this is the greatest power. So, we have discussed what was the first symptom of offense, presence of offense, the first one? Kautilya, don't shout out, raise your hand. What was the second one? Asana. Raise your hand. Yes? Asana. You get extra points for not shouting. So, now we'll come to the third one. The third one is called Bhagavan Nishta Charvaka Vasta Antara Abhinivesha. What is it called? <laughs> Bhagavan. No, repeat. Bhagavan. Nishta. Bhagavan Nishta means the faith and steadiness, hmm? loyalty to Bhagavan. So Bhagavan Nishta, then Chavaka. Chavaka. That means falling from that. And giving up the loyalty and absorption in Krishna and then doing what? Vastan, vastu Antara. Vastu Antara. Antara means other things. Vastu means substance. So Vastu Antara means other substances. Hmm? Abhinivesh. Abhinivesh. Abhinivesh means absorption. So here the symptom is the leaving the uh, activities uh, which are the service to Krishna and becoming absorbed in other subject matters. Vasta Anta Abhinivesh. So who is the example in Srimad Bhagavatam? Who was doing bhakti very very strongly then after some time he got absorbed in something else. Bharat Maharaj, yes. Bharat Maharaj. So, as you know, 
Bharat Maharaj, he was in the forest, he was doing his sadhana and he became very high. What stage did Bharat Maharaj come to? Rati. Yes, Nishta, Ruchi, Asakti, Rati, the beginning stage of Bhava had appeared in him. But one day, one baby deer was drowning in the river and he felt sorry for that baby deer. He had Sattvic Doya. Compassion in the mode of goodness is called Sattvic Doya. So he took the deer out of the river and began to take care of the deer like his, as if the deer were his own son. And then after some time, he was remembering his mantras. But as he was remembering his mantras, that deer used to come up with his little horns, which are soft and cool like drops of water, and poke him under, under his arm while he was meditating. And the deer kept poking him. So then Bharat Maharaj, he took the baby there in his lap and, okay. And then he was remembering the, the, his mantras and his stories. <laughs> gradually, 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 his mind became absorbed in that deer. Yeah? Until one day when the deer ran away because a herd of deer came by and he went with those deer, then Bharat became mad. He became completely mad and he was searching everywhere. He said, oh Mother Earth, what austerities did you perform to be touched by the feet of my dear? We <laughs> 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 came completely mad. Huh? So, and in the last moment of his life, and then he remembered the dear Yam Yam Bapis Param Bhavam Chad Yatyanti Kalibram Tam Tam Ivaki Kontia Sadata Bhava Bhavita. As you know, in his next life, he became a dear. Now, you know the history, so I'm not telling them in detail. We're trying to look at what is the teaching in this. And the, the teaching is very important. Now, becoming attached to something in this world is our prarabdha karma. Prarabdha karma means the karma that we are undergoing in this lifetime. Between when we're born and when we'll die, everything in between, that's called our prarabdha karma. Now, bhakti is more powerful than your prarabdha karma. If you're performing pra the bhakti, pure bhakti, then these attachments that were supposed to come and lead you in another direction, they cannot touch you. So now the question comes, why did uh, Bharat Maharaj, who was practicing bhakti very strongly, become attached to the deer? And the reason is this, that if a person commit some offense, then that offense intensifies the power of their prarabdha karma. You see, his bhakti was strong enough that his prarabdha karma could not touch him. But because he made some offense in the previous life, so then the prarabdha karma was intensified and therefore his bhakti could not overcome it. So th this is a, the illustration. We may be quite advanced in bhakti, but if some attachment comes, then, and it's very difficult to overcome, then we should know some offense is there and it has intensified the prapta karma. Otherwise, prapta cannot do anything in the power of bhakti. Bhakti is very powerful. Yeah? Now, that's one lesson. Now let's look at another lesson. There's another teaching here. You can understand this from different perspectives. Sometimes, Krishna intensifies the Prabhupada karma of his devotee in order to intensify the devotee's devotion. Hmm? So, and that is also illustrated in Srimad Bhagavatam. Because after one life as a deer, then in the next life, when Bharat Maharaj became Jagdabharat, he was more dedicated, he was more devoted, he was more intensely absorbed in bhakti to Bhagavan than ever before. So the result of that intensity of his prarabdha karma was the increase in devotion. So it can be used as an illustration for what happens if someone commits offense. But don't think in that way in regard to Bharat Maharaj. In regard to Bharat Maharaj, you should think that the Supreme Lord, out of His mercy, intensified His Parabdha Karma and made Him fall down so that he would become extra humble and extra desperate uh, to take shelter of the Lord and that accelerated his progress in devotional service. That's actually the conclusion 
with Bharat Maharaj. And this is why also the Shastra says, never criticize Vaishnavas. Actually, never criticize anyone. But never ever criticize Vaishnavas. You don't know what is happening, what is going on. It may be the reaction to some offense, and when that offense is gone, then their bhakti becomes more. It may even be Krishna arranging some situation as well. So if in the meantime someone will make offense, then oh, they will criticize. They will have a very strong reaction. Bhishma Dev in the Mahabharata said, if you criticize someone, and it's true, even it's true, the same reaction of, of what they did will come to you. And if you criticize someone and it's not true, then double the reaction will come to you. So, Kahari na nindak kare Krishna Krishna boli, Ajya Chaitanya sai jeneva kahali, nindaka na hika labhya sabha shasti gai. Sabha saman Bhagavata dharma gai. In Chaitanya Bhagavad he said, never criticize anyone and always chant the holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. And by this, Ajay Chaitanya says, Jini Bhakali, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu cannot be conquered by anyone. But if we can just never speak ill of anyone and always chant the holy name, then Mahaprabhu comes and said, I am yours, I am yours. And he gives himself to that devotee. It's simple. Spiritual life is simple. Don't make it complicated. So, those who criticize or minimize others, they never attain any good destination. To give honor to every living being is the Bhagavad Dharma, the principle of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Mane na mana de na kirtaniya sadahai. So, Another example of someone who, due to an offense, became absorbed in the activities other than bhakti in some worldly sense enjoyment. Who is that? Gajendra. Gajendra in his previous life was Indrajumna Maharaj. And he made an offense to one Rishi. And because of that, in his next life, he became an elephant. And he was in the heavenly, he was a heavenly planet elephant, enjoying with so many female elephants there. And uh, that he was experiencing some uh, pleasures, but there was absorption in external things, and it was due to some offense. And when the offense wore off, then immediately, as soon as the effect of the offense wore off, by being chewed up by the crocodile, Sometimes when we make some offense, we'll have to be chewed up by crocodiles uh, to become free. Some suffering is there. But as soon as that reaction has worn off, immediately his bhakti from his previous life manifested. Mm -hmm. And he called out to the Supreme Lord, I am yours. Mm -hmm. And then the Supreme Lord appeared there, flying on the back of Garuda. And then he took a lotus flower, offered it. Oh my Lord, please accept this lotus. Mm -hmm. So, Mm. This is called what? Bhagavan Nista Chavaka Vasta Antara Abhinivesh. The absorption in things which make our practice of bhakti become weak. That is the. Which number symptom is that? The third symptom. Okay, now the fourth symptom. Fourth simple symptom is Bhakti Adi Krita Abhimanitvam. Bhakti Adi. That means the activities of bhakti, etc. Okay? Bhakti Adi Krita Abhimanitvam Krita means the good that you have performed. Actually, that's the fifth one. Let me just reverse a little bit. The fourth one, that's the fifth one, we'll come back. The fourth one is Bhakti Shaitilya. Bhakti Shaitilya. Shaitilya means to become slack. To become loose. So Bhakti Shaitilya, due to committing some offense, though our sadhan was very strong, we make RT every morning, we do puja, we remember our mantras three times a day. Dayam Stubam Yasyas Tri Sandhyam. In the three Sandhyas, we remember our Gayatri, we complete our fixed number of Harinam every day, and study Shastra, and do all different services to Guru. But actually, after some time, we start to become slack. Maybe we don't finish our rounds. Maybe remember Gayatri in the morning, but then forget at noon time. Or something like this. So slowly, slowly, the various practices they become loose. This is called Bhakti Shaitilya. Hmm? Slackness. 
in the bhakti. So, if a person has vivek, discrimination, they are learning, they have heard Shastra, and they understand, I'm doing wrong, I'm not following everything strictly, hmm? and this is because I made some offense, then they can again try to follow everything nicely, and very soon the reaction of that offense will be gone. If a person is very simple, they have no discrimination, they don't understand Bhakti Tattva and they become slack and they don't know why, hmm? but they just engage in Bhakti a little bit, the offense will go very easily. Because Krishna is very kind to those who are somewhat ignorant and foolish. But if a person has Vivek discrimination, they understand Tattva and still they are slack in their practice, then this slackness in their practice is a symptom of Kutilya, crookedness. Understand? So, the, they made some offense. It made them become slack. But then they didn't take up the slack and become tight again in their practice. And they should know better. So then that is all now becomes the duplicity. So, there are some examples in Shastra. Have you heard of the king named Maharaj Shatadanya? No? So Maharaj Shatadanya, one day he met one uh, person, atheist, who did not believe in the truth of the Vedas. Hmm? All the words of the Vedas are true. Every word. Vedas are Shabda Brahma, transcendental sound. They are the sound form of the Supreme Lord. And to meet a person who has no faith in the Vedas, who has no faith in Krishna, oh, very terrible. If you associate with them and talk with them hmm, in a friendly way, then Shastra said you should jump in the in the Ganges with all your clothes on and uh, eat some ghee because it's pure and touch a cow and look at the sun. There are four things you have to do to purify yourself. If you if you just seeing the face of an atheistic person, so. But he met one person who was atheist and he had a discussion with him. And the result of just having a discussion and entertaining his atheistic mentality that Maharaj Shatadanya in the next life became a dog. Now one may say, well that's pretty extreme. But there's a reason why he got an extreme reaction and that is because he was actually very educated. He was very learned and he, he knew better. But still, he became slack, hmm? and, be and because of this, then he he came he w he went down. So Rupa Goswami has said, "Atyahara priyasas cha prajapuniya magraha jana sangasta loyam cha sadvi bhakti vinashati." Six things destroy bhakti, and one of them is the association with worldly-minded persons. Does it? From time to time, we have to meet people here and there, but we should not give our attachment and affection to them. Attachment and affection is reserved for Gurudev and Krishna. And if we give our affection to the worldly-minded persons, then that will act like a hook in our heart and pull us into the ocean of material existence. But if we give our affection to Gurudev and pure Vaishnavas, that will also act like a hook in our heart and pull us into the endless ocean of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, the eternal nectar of Bhakti Rasa. So, <clears throat> now that is called Bhakti Shaitilya, the slackness in Bhakti. Now let's say that you decided, I'm not going to be slack in my Bhakti, I'll be very, very strict in everything. If there's some presence of offense, now the fifth symptom comes, which is Bhaktiadi Krita Abhimanatvam. Okay? Bhakti Adi, Bhakti etc. Krita. Krita means performed. Hmm? Abhimanitvam. That is the quality of being proud. Having Abhiman. So, the one person becomes slack due to offense, and the other person, due to offense, he's very strict. But he's very proud of being strict. So, the example is given. In Srimad Bhagavatam, who is the example of the person who was proud of being strict? In Srimad Bhagavatam. Daksha Maharaj. Hmm? Daksha Maharaj, he arrived at the Jagya and everyone stood up to respect him. But Mahadev Lord Shiva did not stand up. 
And then Dakshamana, what is this? Why is he not respecting me? I'm a great devotee. Huh? And he criticized Lord Shiva. Huh? And so for this, of course, you know, that uh, his head was cut off and replaced with the head of a goat and he offered up the humble prayers. But he was not completely free from the offense. So what is the evidence that Daksha Maharaj was not completely free from that offense that he made to Shiva? See? Maybe that he then went to Shiva to say sorry or go sad him. No, he apologized to Lord Shiva. But he did not become completely free. And the evidence is that after some time, Narad Muni came to him. And he said, my sons, is the Haryashwas, and then after that, the Shavalashwas. Can you be their tutor? So he told Narad, please teach them all about Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha, so they can be like me and be Prajapatis and be married and have many children and populate the whole universe. So then Narad Muni told them about Bhakti. Anya Avila Sita Shunya Jnana Kama Don't do any karma, don't do any jnana. Only do pure Bhakti. And what happens if someone does pure Bhakti? Vasu Deva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita Janiyati Asu Vairagyam Jnanam Chaya They become detached. So after hearing the teachings of Narad Muni, then the, how many were there? 60,000 or 100,000 sons of Prajapati Daksha, they all took sannyas and they left home. Then Prajapati Daksha was thinking, how can I populate the universe? I made all these children and now Narad came and preached to them. And now they will take a sannyas, all my hard work was for nothing. Now I have to make another 100,000 sons. So then he was very busy again, he made another 100,000 sons. And the Shabalashas. He said, Narad, this time teach them properly. <laughs> so then Narad taught them what? Hmm? Follow the big brothers. <laughs> hmm? the, that Bhakti is Nirupadi, hmm? without any body. So he taught them about bhakti, they also became detached and they also all took sannyas. Then Daksha Maharaj was ferocious. He said, Narad, why did you teach them these things? Narad said, I only this bhakti is all I know. I can't teach them anything else because bhakti is all I know. So then Daksha Maharaj gave a curse to Narad Muni. He said, I curse you that you will never be able to stay in any place for more than a few days. So now Narad Muni is traveling all over the universe, riding on the horse of the curse of Daksha Maharaj. So it was not really a curse because Narad Muni has taken a vow. He told Bhakti Devi that, oh, if I don't establish Bhakti in the hearts of all the people of the world, and if I don't suppress all other religious concepts and subsume all religious ideas into Bhakti, and if I don't make prominent throughout the world Bhakti festivals, then I am not the servant of Hari. This is my vow. So Narad Muni took this vow and directly himself and through his devotees, Srivas Adi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda. Narad became Srivas, Adi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda, and through his devotees, all festivals are going on everywhere in the world. Gaur Premanandi! So see here that Daksha Maharaj, he was very proud of his sadhana. Because of that, he made offense to Mahadev. He apologized but not deep, so deeply, so some offense was still remaining and due to that, one offense always leads to another so then Daksha Maharaj, later he made an offense to Narad Muni so these are some of the inner teachings in Srimad Bhagavatam so in the Padma Pranit he said Nama Parada Yuktanam Nama Neva Harantyagam how can one become free from offenses to the holy name by chanting continuously chant again and again and again if there's a, a devotee to whom we have pinched their heart somehow hmm, knowingly or unknowingly we should give pranams and beg for their forgiveness and try to render service and glorify that devotee all over the world and then uh, the devotee is always forgiving but krishna is not forgiving but when krishna sees that 
that really you glorify that devotee from the core of your heart, Krishna becomes satisfied and blesses us with pure bhakti. Hmm? And then that Krishna, who is very difficult to attain, becomes easily attained. You know Jamuna Chari and his Totaratna, he told a beautiful verse. Ullangita trivida simma samati shai sambhavanam tava parivradhima svabhavaha maya balam bhavathapi niguyamanam pasyanti kechit anisham tvad anandya bhavaha The meaning is this. O Krishna, you are ulangita trivida simha there are simma means limitations. So three vidda simma means three types of limitations. What is that? The limitation of time, the limitation of space, and the limitation of thoughts. Krishna, his name, his form, his beauty, his qualities, his associates, his dharma are all Ulangita Trivida Singha, all beyond the limitations of time, of space, and the material thoughts, conceptuality. Then how can anyone know Krishna? How can anyone understand him? Maya Balam, Bhagatapi Niguyamanam. Krishna is Niguyaman. That means extremely secret. No one can see him, no one can know him. He's hiding himself by the power of his Maya. Naham Prakasha Savasya Yoga Maya Samavrita. I am covered. No one can know me, no one can see me. However, hmm, Yamunacharya is saying, Pasyanti Kejidani Ananya Bhava. Those who have Ananya Bhav, one pointed bhakti. Then they very easily see Krishna at all times. Even if Krishna hides from them. You know, when Krishna was a baby, Mother Shoda was churning the yogurt and she saw that some milk was boiling over in the kitchen. So she was feeding Krishna her breast milk and she put him down to go to save the milk. And Krishna was upset. Oh, why did she stop feeding me? And he took a, a, a stone pestle and he broke the yogurt pot. And yogurt went all over the kitchen, everywhere, spraying everywhere. But then Krishna thought, oh, when my mother comes back, she'll be very angry, so I'll hide. So Krishna ran to a hiding place, to a store. And when, but when Mother Shoda came back, she looked and saw that Krishna with his baby feet had run in the yogurt. And she just had to follow the yogurt footprints. <laughs> and she came to that room and Krishna saw her coming and he ran away. But eventually she caught him. So even though Krishna tries to hide, if someone has Ananya Bhav, that means they're thinking and serving and devoted only to Krishna, not to anyone else. Then Krishna is always caught by that person. Hmm? Krishna can try to hide, but Krishna cannot hide from those who have Ananya Bhav. So it's very important. What do you have to have? Ananya Bhav. Ananya Bhav. Ananya means another. Ananya means no other. No other mood, Ananya Bhav, no other mood, only the mood of devotion to Krishna. But Ananya Bhav doesn't mean that, oh, I am not doing the path of karma, I am not doing the path of yoga, I am not doing the path of jnana, and I am only doing bhakti. But also within bhakti, there is also Ananya Bhav. If someone is thinking, oh, I am devoted to Bhagavan, to God, to everyone, I am devoted to Nishingadev and Ramachandra and Lord Narayan and the Jagannath and Vamandev, Karamamatsya and the Buddha and everyone, <laughs> like this, this is not Ananya Bhav. Ananya Bhav means one Ishtadev, like Hanuman. Hanuman said, Sri Nate, Janaki Nate, Abeda, Paramatmani. Hmm? You know? Once Krishna was in Dwarka and he said to Garuda, Oh Garuda, please tell Hanuman to come here. So Garuda was flying and he went to Kimpurushavash where Hanuman was serving the deity of Lord Rama and crying in separation. Oh my Lord has gone but I have was left behind. 
And Garuda said, oh, Krishna is calling you in Dwarka, please come. So then Garuda flew back to Dwarka and Krishna was waiting. And Krishna said to Garuda, what did you say to him? He said, I said, Krishna is calling you in Dwarka, please come. Krishna said, that's the problem. You should have said, Lord Ram is calling you, please come. So then Garuda flew again. He flew all the way to King Purushwash and said to Hanuman, Oh Hanuman, Lord Ram is calling you in Dwarka. Go there at once. And he said, Yes, I'm coming just now. And Garuda was flying as fast as he could, but when he arrived in Dwarka, Hanuman was already there. <laughs> he came so fast. <laughs> but while Garuda was going to fetch him, then Krishna, he said, Oh Balaram, come here and stand on my right side and you take the form of Lakshman. So then Balaram stood next to Krishna and took the form of Lakshman. Then Krishna took the form of Lord Ram. Then Krishna said, Oh Satyabhama, come here, stand on my left side and take the form of Sita. And Satyabhama came and she... <laughs> she was trying, but she could not manifest the form of Sita. Why? Because Sita is very calm and quiet and very humble. Whereas Satyabhama is a very impetuous and tempestuous and quite fiery, very fiery wife. So because Satyabhama did not have that humble sweet mood like uh, like Sita Devi, she tried what she could. So then Krishna would go and sit down. Hey Rukmini, please come here. <laughs> so then Satyabhama went away and Rukmini came. She's very calm and quiet and she came next to Krishna and took the form of Sita Devi. And then Hanuman came there. And he bowed down to Krishna in the form of Ram. So try to be like a Hanuman. That means follow the principle of Ananya Bhav. One point in devotion. So Hanumanji has said, Sri Nate, Janaki Nate, Abeda Paramatmani, Tatapi Mamasabasa, Rama Kamala Lochana. I know that Krishna is Supreme Lord, and I know that Rama is Supreme Lord, that Krishna and Rama are non different. I know that. But still, I only love Lord Rama. He is my life and soul. The lotus eyed Lord Ram is my everything. So this is called Ananya Bhav, one pointed. And especially in this line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we should have Ananya Bhav to Bhave Vrindavana Vyayana Krishna in Vrindavan. But only being one pointed to Krishna in Vrindavan also is not enough. Because one may think, I like Krishna like a baby. Hmm? Playing in the lap of mother, or I like Krishna as a cowboy taking the cows to graze, or I like Krishna who is dancing with the Braja Gopis. Hmm? So you have to fix one bhav, and especially our acharyas, Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, Sula Bhakti Nautaku, all our acharyas, they are fixed in one mood, hmm? that is the desire. Tabayasmi, Tabayasmi, Na Jivami Tvayabina. Oh Radharani, I am yours, I am yours, I am yours. Without your mercy I cannot live. If Krishna will give mercy to me but you don't give mercy to me, then I don't want Krishna's mercy. I accept Krishna's mercy only Radhika if you will give your mercy to me and accept me as your maid servant. So, Raghunath Daska Swami is praying. Oh Radhika, I will never ask you for anything. Radhika said, I want to give you a benediction. Ask for a benediction. No, I want no benediction. Radhika said, I am very pleased with you. You become my Saki like Lalita and Vishaka. Raghunath Swami said, no, I bow down to your friends like Lalita and Vishaka again and again and offer prayers to them. But I don't want to be like them. Rasostu, Rasostu Satyam. It is my vow that I desire only the endless sweet rasa of being your maidservant, your dasi. Eh? So, for those who are following Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Rupa Goswami, this is the meaning. Ananda Bhava. One-pointed devotion. Itai Gaur Premanande Thank you for your kind attention. If there are any questions, you can take one or two questions.
Yes, Maharaj. Today you mentioned the story of the Brahmin, which was motivated that Mahavishnu could get the, the mercy or the darshan of Lord Krishna. So I wonder what is the background story of the six brothers or, uh, of Krishna who left the world before he, before Balaram? Ah, uh, yes, yes. What is the background story? So actually, we touched, we came very close to that history today. Because remember we were discussing that sometimes Krishna makes a devotee, intensifies their desire to make them become very humble and progress quickly in bhakti. So such a situation happened to Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma, he, uh, by the arrangements of the Supreme Lord, became attracted to his own daughter who had taken the form of a deer. And at that time, there are some devitas, some demigods called the Maruts. Hmm? The Maruts. So the Maruts, they saw Lord Brahma, hmm, their grandfather. And they said, oh, what is this? This is very wrong behavior. And uh, they had a critical mentality towards him. So Brahma was very quickly rectified and he became more advanced. But those Maruts, for that offense, they had to take birth as demons. And they became the six sons of a Kalanemi. And Kalanemi, you know, that means the Kalanemi was the uh, son of uh, uh, Hiranyakashipu. So they became six grandsons of Hiranyakashipu. And they did hard austerities in that life to get the mercy of Lord Brahma. When Hiranyakashipu found out, he said, hey, wait a minute. I am the only one around here who does austerities to get the benedictions from Lord Brahma. Why are you doing things independently from me? And, and uh, Hiranyakashipu cursed them. You'll be killed by your own father in your next life. So then their father, Kala Nemi, in his next life became Kamsa Maharaj. And his six sons, who were previously the Maruts, became the sons of Devaki. So when Kamsa Maharaj was killing the children of Devaki, he was killing his own sons from his previous life. Hmm? Then later, um, you know, there's the history how Krishna brought them back and uh, they uh, drank just once the breast milk of Devaki. And because it was the Mahaprasad, because Krishna had drunk just once before he was taken to Gokul by Vasudev Maharaj, by taking Krishna Mahaprasad, then they became liberated from that offense and the Murats went back to the heavenly planets then. So that, that's the history of those, those six boys. Any other questions? No? Then I, I, do, uh, <laughs> I was just reflecting when you were talking about the state with problem with Shrabla. Uh, I was thinking that today people, those who are a little reflecting on the condition of the world, especially requested to think and to question everything. Mm -hmm. It's like this the quality. If you don't question, then you're kind of lost. Yeah. Because you're going to run into some direction, anybody's going to take advantage of that, mm -hmm. and you just become a fool. Yeah. So this, this, this thing, how can we explain that? Our faith conception uh -huh. to side by side with actually do questioning, because as philosophers we do question a lot of things. Yes, yes. So it's a very beautiful question. Uh, more or less from the from the sixties, the counterculture had a, a man, their mantra was the um, question authority. You have to always question authority. So especially young people and people involved in the counterculture, they're always questioning everything. They don't put their faith in anything. And especially now, those who have been through the modern university system. Uh, they're educated in the values of the postmodernist intellectual movement. And uh, one of the, the postmodernism is characterized by uh, a stance of suspicion towards all meta narratives. In other words, if someone has a, a narrative which claims to explain everything, then you should be very suspicious of that. So that's the main uh, attitude in which people are educated today who have been through that postmodernist education. So then, how do you deal with that? Now, also, another part of Maharaj's question is, but in devotional service, we're meant to inquire. Tadvidi pranipadena pariprashnena sevaya. We surrender to Guru, we render service, and that makes us eligible to ask questions. 
And bhakti itself is a is the is a conversation. Srila Jiva Goswami describes bhakti is a dialogue, it's a conversation between an advanced devotee and an aspiring devotee. And through that conversation, we all become enlightened. The, the speaker and the questioner and all those who are listening all become enlightened by that. So questions are very important in bhakti. But uh, the question should be put respectfully without a doubt in the speaker and without a doubt in the bhakti. So then the question comes, well how can we be without doubts? And the answer is this, what is sraddha? In the beginning of our spiritual life, we start with faith. Now, where does faith come from? Bhakti stu Bhagavat Sangha Bhakta Sangina Parijayate. Faith comes from association with sadhus. And so the eligibility for bhakti, that is faith, it comes from a blessing. Vaishnavas by their glance or by their words of blessing or by their heartly prayers cause to appear in our heart what is called Vishesh Sanskar. Vishesh Sanskar means a special impression. You see, all people in this world, their subconscious mind is filled with samskars, impressions of past life's activities and this life's activities. So when those impressions come from the subconscious mind into the conscious mind, then they're called uh, basana or desires. So even though people feel that they're free, they're not free, it's just the samskaras are like echoes of past activities and they come into the mind and they're dictating what everyone is doing. So people feel that they're free, but they're like a bull with a ring through the nose, being dragged through life by their past activities, impressions. So just as a person may wake up in the morning and think, what will I do now? Uh, let me sleep in until 10 o'clock and then I'll have a cup of coffee and a cigarette and then I'll watch TV and whatever. And so people may, they, every day they think, I'll do this, I'll do that. They're actually being, everything is being dictated by their past sanskars. Now, when we come in the association of a sadhu who has bhakti shakti, the power of devotion, the internal potency in the heart of that devotee, then when they look in our eyes, when they speak to us, when they pray to Krishna on our behalf, then this causes a new sanskar, that is a vishesh sanskar, an intense sanskar to appear in our subconscious mind. And now we become under the control of that. So now that person wake, wakes up, oh, I don't want to wake up at 10 o'clock, I want to wake up at 4 o'clock. I don't want to have a cigarette and a cup of coffee, I want to go to Mangalarti. I don't want to go to the cinema, I want to reach you at Bhagavatam, like this. So, all of our activities in devotional service are coming by the power of the Sanskar that was placed in our heart by Sadhu Sangha. And this is why Sadhu Sangha is very important. If our devotion is not very strong, come again and again in the association of Sadhus. Hear from them, serve them, and the Sanskar will become stronger and stronger and stronger until one becomes very steady and, and fixed in the path of devotional service. Now what happens is if a person makes an offense, that samskar, which is actually, when it becomes very strong, that samskar is called bhakti lata bij, the seed of devotion. But what happens is if we commit offense, that seed, because it's transcendental, can never be destroyed. So it becomes covered over by material impressions for some time. And after some suffering and so on, then those material impressions drift away and the Bhakti Lata Beach, the seed of devotion, becomes prominent again. So in, uh, in Bhakti Sandarbha, Srila Jiva Goswami Pad said, someone can commit an offense and then even become a demon. And may become a demon for several lifetimes even. But because that seed of devotion is indestructible and transcendental, after suffering for some time, again they will come in the path of bhakti. So, faith is not a conviction of the mind, just like, for example, let's say, how do we convince someone? You cannot. The mind is so crooked like the tail of a dog. 
If you take the tail of a dog and you get a bamboo stick and you tie it onto the tail of the dog and then you massage it with ghee. So the dog's tail is completely straight, you can get a ruler to check it. Also. But as soon as you untie and take the stick away, then doink, the dog's tail will become crooked again. Like that. So people are like that. You try to explain with this argument and that argument and this argument and that argument, but they'll somehow find a way to get out of it because they're always questioning. So what do we have to do? We have to chant. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Now Namakari, Bhamudan, Nija, Sarva Shakti, all power is in the holy name. From the holy name, Bhakti Shakti comes in our heart. Then when we speak to someone, then that Shakti can be transferred to them. Hmm? Through good wishes, through kindness. And the samskara Bhakti will come in their heart. And then they will believe, yes, Krishna is too, Bhagavan Swayam. Krishna is Supreme Pass, that you go ahead. Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Eva Keva. And the chanting of the holy name is the only way. So, Sri Srila Bhaktisthan Swartakur, he said, Braja Basi Gan Pracharaka Dhan. The eternal Braja Basis are the treasure of the preacher. Understand? It's very, very deep. Braja Basi Gan Pracharaka Dhan. That means that person who every morning is chanting Harinam and absorbed in following in the footsteps of the residents of Vrindavan, remembering Krishna, remembering Radhika, remembering Lalita Saki, remembering Rupa Manjri, and how they are serving Radha and Krishna. He's absorbed. His dhan, his treasure, is the lotus feet of those bridge basses that he wants to follow. Then that person becomes a preacher. So, braja basi gan, dhan. If we're absorbed in the ananya bhav, then when we meet with others, oh, some small vibration of that will come to that person and make a deep samskar in their heart. So, Brahmanda Brahmetrikon Bhagavan Jeev, Guru Krishna Prasadi Pai, Bhakti Lata Bij. This person is wandering for many lifetimes and they meet a pure devotee and by the mercy of that pure devotee, the seed of devotion comes. That is the Shraddha. That is the Krishna Seva Basana. The desire to serve Krishna arising from the Vishesh Samskar. Intense Samskar impression in the heart. So, Mahapur said to Sanatana Goswami, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastrikai, Lava Matra, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi. Achha.